One of the main reasons I've gone through this whole process with my Unraid server of trying to consolidate a whole bunch of different services that I used to pay for through subscriptions or just relied on third party services that would handle all of my data and trying to bring that to my own control, reduce the cost over the course of years and just have a little bit more fun with it. One of the main things that I've done that with is with my photos. Now I am a photo hoarder. I have such a hard time deleting old photos, deleting old videos. And I went from having a phone that had a lot of storage on it because it also supported an S micro SD card. And I had a one terabyte micro SD card in there to a phone that had 512 gigs of maximum storage. And I run into the limit of that quite a bit, especially when doing all of my YouTube videos, when I record videos and stuff on the phone, they take up quite a bit of space. And I really like the idea of backing up my photos. So for a long time, I was using things like Google Photos and backing up a bunch of stuff. Sometimes I would upload the original, sometimes I would upload reduced resolution versions. But with the server, I have the ability of doing that for myself and having a ton of storage. So today we're gonna to be talking about something called image, which is basically like hosting your own personal iCloud or Google Photos, where I can have everything automatically synced up and backed up to my server so that I can safely and comfortably get things off of my phone. And you know, that album from 2012 that I wanna show people every once in a while, I don't have to have it locally on my phone anymore. I can have it on the server and then just pull up my image whenever I need to and show them that way. So first off, let me go through the image GitHub and kind of show you what image is. So it is a self-hosted photo and video management solution. It is, it seems like it's very heavily modeled off of what Google Photos used to be like. And I really do like that about it. It has a ton of really good features. And as time goes on, they are adding so many more, including things like machine learning and uh, way better ways to share particular albums, particular photos, do collaborations and stuff. They've just done so much here. Here's a list of the features that they have listed on their GitHub, and there's a ton more available as well. So this is how I have it set up on the Unwrite server. So I have image here. Don't mind the fact that there's an update. I'm running into an issue that is my own problem. I caused it, so I'm trying to get that fixed. It's not updating properly, but I have the official image. Uh, image, And then I also have a uh, image specific SQL server set up to handle all of the database stuff. This makes life so much easier. Um, setting it up this way, I don't have to have a separate one, they have it kind of pre-configured. It made life so much easier, especially if you're afraid of database stuff, this made life a lot easier. And then if we go into my settings, I have everything set up pretty standard. Um, I don't have a, a dedicated machine learning host. We'll talk about machine learning in a little bit because that is another really incredible thing that they've kind of implemented in here recently. Um, but pretty relatively standard setup here. Now, if we look at my image server itself, we can see that I've already filled this thing up quite a bit. So I have almost 50,000 photos, 4,000 videos, and almost 300 gigs of all of that on the server currently. And we'll quickly go through some of the settings here before I show you what the actual layout looks like. But these are all of the types of jobs that can be, that can be run, and as mentioned, a bunch of these are done through machine learning. Now, if you have a dedicated machine learning rig, you can have that done and it'll do all of these jobs extremely quickly. I don't have that though. I am just using the machine learning capabilities directly through my server. So it is a very, very slow process, but it still works. And we'll talk about that when we get over to the photo. So let's do that now. So here is my image. I'm gonna make sure that I don't show anything that I don't wanna show. Um, but we have all of our photos and it's gonna go through in chronological order. You can see here on the left-hand side here, it brings us all the way down. It'll show us kind of a density of where the most photos and stuff are, which is also really cool. And this is extremely easy to navigate on, on the desktop. We'll show how it looks on the mobile as well. It looks really good there too but this just works flawlessly and how I personally have it set up 
is that my phone will back up to image whenever it's charging. If it's not charging, it won't back up. Um, it makes things a lot easier for me. I often am charging my phone because I do use it a lot throughout the day. And so things do get backed up pretty quickly. You can also have it set up to back up at certain times. We'll talk about that when we go on the mobile. Now we have albums and the way that I currently have the album set up is that it is mirroring the albums that I have set up on my phone. So if I have an album set up on my phone, it's gonna create the exact same album with the exact same amount of pictures on image. So that's great as well. Adding albums is really easy and there's also additional dockers that you can set up where they will automatically create albums for you based on very particular criteria that you set up. So that's great as well. Now, if I go into the Explorer, you can see that it has things kind of blocked off based on location. So it is using the metadata from those images to do locations. It's also doing people and this is part of the deep learning or the machine learning. It is using a particular algorithm that they have set up that they mention on their documentation. If you wanna go ahead and check that out to identify people's faces and kind of group them together. Just like on your phone, it's not perfect and it doesn't work 100% of the time, but it does a really, really good job. And so far I've really liked it. It doesn't select the greatest picture for everybody though, but it seems to do a decent job most of the time. So one of the reasons that, so one of the things that I used a lot on Google Photos was album sharing. So if I was at a wedding with a whole bunch of friends or on a vacation with a whole bunch of friends, I would create a shared album and then I'll invite other people as collaborators in order to have all of that kind of stuff in one place and make it so it's really easy for all of us to share our photos. You can do that in here and you can just share albums with people as well. So what we can do here is I can create a shared album specifically for sharing or I can go to my albums page and say I wanna go ahead and share the signal one. I can go ahead and share this and then create a link and I can create a custom URL for that link. I can password protect that link. I can do a description. I can have it expire over a certain period of time and I can allow public users to download or upload to that album. So it makes collaborative albums super easy. I haven't used it on Image yet, um, but I do plan on trying to leverage this a little bit more, especially during the holidays with my family, especially since I'm moved out from home, my sister's moved out from home and uh, having all of those things in one, under one house doesn't really exist anymore, this can make a lot of that quite a bit easier. Now, without doxing myself, the map is also a really cool feature. It will show you how your pictures are kind of spread out over the globe. So I haven't, I don't have a ton of pictures with metadata in certain places. Like I've taken a bunch of pictures when I was in Spain, don't have any of those really showing up there. I've taken pictures while in Mexico, don't really have those showing up there. Um, but those, a lot of those pictures are from before metadata was really saved on every single photo, especially when you're taking it with a phone. But this is also a really cool feature. I really do like it. And it's a fun way to kind of explore things. Some of them are wrong. Like I've never been to Kazakhstan, so I don't know where these pictures are getting their metadata from, um, but you could always just click on them and update the metadata if you want to. Now for the utilities, you're able to review duplicates. So this is also using machine learning to compare images. It's not just looking at the image file names themselves, but it's looking at the metadata, it's looking at the image composition, it's doing a whole bunch of stuff to compare that. The utility itself is also very easy to use. It'll go ahead and show you all of the images, it'll show you their names, it'll show you the resolution, and as you can see here, these ones are just pictures that I took very quickly one next to another. So they're not the exact same, but they're extremely close. So it does make it really easy for you to review. You can full size the images um, and compare them against one another. So these are some delicious butter tarts from one of my favorite butter tart places on the planet. And you know, the pictures aren't the exact same, but they're close. So I can decide to keep them all. I can decide to trash them. I can decide which ones I want to trash it makes it really, really easy. One of the other utilities is the review large files. So this really helps you figure out if there are any extremely large videos that you wanna get rid of, maybe ones that you don't necessarily mean to keep. Uh, I've got, again, a bunch of these are videos that I've done for YouTube. Um, some of them are videos I've done for family, some of them are videos from when I was overseas. 
So, I mean, you get a lot of data when you mouse over these files. It will preview videos, which is really, really handy. It'll give you all the metadata that's available. It'll do a whole bunch of stuff to make it easier for you to review. And it's nice that I have this. I don't necessarily need it because I have a ton of storage space on the server, but it is great that they have that available. Now they also have a locked folder. Uh, I'm not going to show you what's in there, but the locked folder is pretty minimal in terms of features. It only allows you to just store photos in there. You can't store albums. Um, you can't do a lot of organization in there. It's just really just a spot to dump all of those kinds of stuff that you want to keep locked away, no matter what kind of images they are. And it's there for you if you need it. Um, I use it from time to time, but it doesn't really have a ton of the features like I would have on my phone, for example, where it's basically just like a whole other photos section that's locked behind a thumbprint and a password. And then like most photo apps, we also have a trash bin where we can review things that we've deleted and decide if we wanna keep it. And we they will be permanently deleted after 30 days, so you don't have to worry about it either. Super handy tool to have. One last thing while we're in the server that I wanted to show you is the external library. So you can also have images from folders or things managed by other software, not managed by image, visible within image if you want to using the external library. So this can be extremely handy if you wanna use that as well. And then as mentioned, they have machine learning, which does a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And you can also do remote machine learning. So that's what I was talking about before, where you can have a separate machine that's doing machine learning for you. And as long as it has an accessible IP address, the server can go ahead and use its power to do a lot of the machine learning stuff that image is able to leverage. So. That stuff's pretty cool too. All right, so here we are on mobile. And like I mentioned, it feels very similar to the way that Google Photos looked and operated to me. Um, so again, we have our photos here, we have our albums, we have our search. Um, so we're able to search by people, location, the specific camera, date, media type, display options, all of these things, awesome, really great. The albums, we have the ability to, took a second to load there, but we have a whole bunch of albums here. So that's great. And then we can also just go through our library. And then again, we're kind of looking, this is like the explore page that we saw on the desktop. Now, if I go into my settings, we can go ahead and take a look here. And the big one I wanna show you is the backup. So I have, I have it set up so that I can use cellular data for photos, but I only use Wi-Fi for videos and it's going to require the device to be charging for it to back up in the background, but if I have the app open, it will back up no matter what. And then you can also choose the albums and they're the ones that are synced. So this is the whole thing I told you about where I have it basically mirroring the albums on my phone, makes life a lot easier for me, and I do like the way that I organize my albums on my phone. So overall, the phone app works fantastic. Earlier this year, the, I was having issues where it was constantly crashing while doing backups in the background. That has since been fixed. I think that it was a problem with my server version being a little bit, a few versions behind the app version. Doesn't seem to be causing me any issues le recently. It hasn't caused me any issues since like, I think maybe July or so. Everything has been good. I've been super happy with the performance so far. It works super well. Things load quickly, things just work really, really well. I really do like the way that the app performs. And, you know, I can feel like I can just kind of navigate through this no matter what. I wish it was a little bit easier for me to figure out ways to just kind of move things entirely off of my phone into image instead of just mirroring it. That's something I'm gonna figure out in the future, but that's nothing on image's fault it's on me to figure out the way that I want to kind of get that whole thing set up and start saving myself some storage space because yeah, I'm, I'm running out of storage space here and I really do need to clear some of this up, especially since every time I record a YouTube video using my phone or just clips using my phone, it's in 4k, it's taking up a ton, of ton of space and I kind of need some of the space back. But I'd really like to know what you guys think about image. Are you guys using image? Are you using something that's similar to image, another self-hosted solution? Are you just, do you just prefer using the cloud solutions like iCloud or Google Photos or Dropbox or what have you? Um, I've been really enjoying using image. I've had it on here since 
basically the beginning. I, it's one of the things I, I installed pretty early on. And recently I have been looking at some of the uh, self-contained NAS storage solutions. So things like Synology and from a bunch of different companies. And some of them have some really cool solutions for this as well. That's kind of like their own version of doing uh, image. I really do like how image is trying to keep everything self-hosted and they're really not pushing for you to pay for anything. They're making everything for you to do for yourself, which is great. But I'm really curious what you guys think about it, what you guys are doing on your own, what you guys prefer. Let me know down in the comment section below. Um, image has been a great thing for me. I haven't done the steps of starting to like really offload a lot of stuff off my phone. I've really just done it for moving the big files off. I haven't done a lot of the other stuff, but I should probably clean it up because my phone is getting very full. I was not able to afford the one terabyte version of my phone. So I have the 512 and I've just filled that thing up with music and photos. So, but anyways, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like subscribed, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you want to see any other videos about Unraid or about all the self-hosting and stuff that I've been doing, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.